This is Movies, a podcast about the act of cinema. And with me today, of course, is uh, the Dante, or would I be the Dante, to my Randall, uh, Hans, the J to my silent Bob. Yeah, wait, no. I'm, I'm the other one. I don't want to be Dante, he dies. Well, there goes that for anyone who hasn't seen Clerks 3. Hey! You know what? <laughs> uh, welcome back to the show, Hans. How how are you doing tonight? Pretty good. Um, just finished watching it like half an hour ago, and uh, have a lot to say. A lot to say. You've been saying a lot in the group chat. Yeah. Talking about and on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. Can't bit. keep your opinions nope. to yourself. But you know what? That's all right because we have a third mic tonight. We have special guest Mario Cuomo has joined us yet again to discuss Clerks. How are you doing tonight, Mario? I'm good. I had to go very far to see this movie. Really? How, I, what, it wasn't playing locally? No, well, I was already, I'm in Michigan, and uh, I had to, uh, the, the nearest theater did not have it, so I had to go about 25 miles to a little town called Wayne, Wayne, Michigan, and wow. the theater was extremely nice, and it was the nicest thing in the whole town. So luckily, it was a it was a good experience. Was there anybody in the audience? Yeah, just like some like three hundred fifty pound dude in a movie <laughs> shirt. Was he wearing a hockey shirt and jean uh, shorts? He was wearing a nice <laughs> movies shirt, holding up his oh. man movies, and oh, uh, no. And I think he had like long coat because he was just coughing his lungs out the entire movie. And you know what's funny too? Uh, the movie theater where I watched it also had people in it because you could hear them laughing <laughs> on, the, <laughs> on the cam rip that I was able to watch. Oh shit! Uh, yeah, and they I applauded. was really surprised that this movie had a cam rip to it because it is a limited time uh, fathom event. You're either checking it out. I think it, it, at the theater that I went to, and I'm pretty sure this was the case with all the New York theaters. There was one showtime in the day, and it just ran for seven days. Uh, you had to catch the 7 p.m. screening. If you weren't, then you weren't seeing the movie. Uh, other than that, the only other form of release this movie's gotten is through Kevin Smith's road show that he does, where he'll tour the movie around. And, um, yeah, I was really surprised because we were going to just have to have you watch Clerks 1 and 2 and hope for the best, with like, much like Elvis. I mean, it's kind of just a retread of Elvis, but... Uh, I'm glad you got to watch the movie, even if you have your your strong opinions about it, which uh, I noticed you put up a screen cap of J Jason Mewes' teeth immediately yep. when you were watching the film. <laughs> God, those are noticeable, though. I was, it, was, it was just a little weird to me that this pretty much useless and almost stupidly useless character that deals drugs got veneers. I was very confused by that choice of why, you know, I don't know any drug dealer that has such white teeth so that was very jarring right from the start yeah it made me miss the uh i miss the gummy look actually like mm -hmm. the the uh the all gums I, I missed that i was like really thrown off by those teeth dude like, if you were if you watch zach and Miri make a porno you get to see that where his like face is sunken in you know, he kind of just, his face changes forms it, it, like every other movie I've noticed. Because if you watch Mallrats, he's kind of like chipmunk cheeked and he's chubby faced. And then you get around that, he looks very cracked out. And now he's just full on Mr. Ed look. He's very yeah. horsey. He looks a movie. lot like Kevin Smith's kid. That's weird, isn't it? Dude, did they have yeah. to throw <laughs> He did not have to throw her in there at the funeral. I was like, oh, is he yeah. going to make a movie finally where he doesn't toss his daughter in, into the mix? And then, sure enough, she's just there. But his wife, too. Just yeah. Like, oh, the wife was more in egregious in this film, I think. Um, yeah. No, you know what? It might be worse in Clerks, too, because she has like a legitimate role right. in that movie. Um, yeah, it, I mean, look, I, I mentioned this in my very brief letterbox review, which is like, if you can put that aside, because that is just a staple for every single one of his movies, whether his friends are famous or not, he will put them in the movie in a shoehorn right. role. Um, and there are plenty in this film, but I don't know if they necessarily... Hans, did you watch... Um, and Mario, I, same question to you. Did either of you watch Jay and Silent Bob reboot? No. Yeah. That is the worst example of that, in my yeah. opinion, because exactly. it is just nonstop. Like it's like five minute skits with a new celebrity each time. Mm. Yeah, and that's it's, rough. 
Well, this one felt very, very much like the Zack and Miri montage, right? With the same setting of auditions. And it's yeah. just people saying funny lines or. Dude, I was lines. slightly annoyed. Um, Cause I know he had the relationship with the one guy from Impractical Jokers. Cause I watched that clerk documentary. Mm -hmm. And the guy with uh, the beard. Uh, yeah. And then he just threw in all of the Impractical Jokers. Yeah. For this yes, movie. he did. And I was yeah. like, all right. I think they're all in New Jersey. That's why. So it was just easy oh. to get them. Maybe they're all hanging yeah. out or something at the time. Oh, but th dude. then there's some cameos that just don't really make sense at all. But the girl from like Supergirl. <laughs> Oh sure, Melissa yeah. Beno something. Uh, Benoist. Freddie, Freddie, yeah. Prince, Freddie Prince Jr. looks like a mummy, dude. And Sarah Michelle <laughs> Geller too. That's yeah. There's no reason for any of those people to be in there. I mean, Affleck kind of makes sense since that's his boy from back in the day, and Jennifer Lopez doesn't seem to have a problem with them hanging out together like Jennifer Garner did. Yeah. Um, another thing with this movie is that if you are into anything Kevin Smith related as far as like podcasts go, um, you get like a beat for beat retread of a lot of his stories, especially regarding the heart attack, like l verbatim how he told his uh, him, him having a heart attack r immediately coming off of stage uh, in 2018. That story plays out as Randall's heart attack in the beginning of this movie with the same dialogue, same line, everything across the board is the same thing, um, which is fine, I guess, but you would think, well, you know, my audience overlaps directly here. Yeah. I would change up the dialogue at least. How but, is it fine when the only people that are going to watch this are super fans? Because it's so difficult to watch it. So sure. I don't know. It's, it feels like a, like a cheap, very easy, you know, what, five minutes that he, yeah. he could have written differently, maybe? Well, the thing with this movie is that I feel like it, it is three different movies. It becomes three different movies as it unfolds. Uh, and that first half hour, I think, is exactly what my fears were going into the movie, which is this is going to be another Jane Silent Bob reboot. It's going to be a lot of famous friends, a lot of just quippy dialogue that doesn't land, cringy jokes, uh, just secondhand embarrassment on behalf of many of the actors. That's uh, yeah, but I do funny. think uh, the film ramps up in a in a unexpected way and changes form. I think by the time you get to that third act. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I couldn't get past the oh, so we're just watching the same movie again. And maybe because I watched like fifty minutes of Clerks One before, I was just like, I'm not. You know, I I remember everything that happens here. It's not like the most. Uh, complicated plot that i've ever seen so I, I remember everything that was happening so then i was just like i'll just watch the third one I, my idea was to watch the three of them but i, I after seeing one uh half of one and and the whole three i don't i don't know if i would have you know clerks two is the one I, i've liked the most always so i yeah. i probably just keep that well why don't, why don't we let's retread a little bit and go and establish where each of us are at as far as kevin smith goes as a director, because Hans, you and I have talked about it before. And I think Mario, we probably talked about Kevin Smith in passing on some earlier shows. Yeah. Um, before I, we, before yeah. we do that, can I just show you guys uh, how I was watching this movie? Yeah, please like a do. couple of screenshots. And yeah. in, in, in the middle of the scene, you will get this very <laughs> nice ad. So <laughs> casino <laughs> so will just pop up in the middle of the street. And then uh, there's this ad from this fella that's getting a lot. No, of he money was in the movie. Blender. This guy's this guy is uh, one of the co-stars. He's one of the I cameos. Like, like dinner in the movie, you know, you get a little ad in the middle oh, of it. Practical he's... Joker. So he's the new one. <laughs> anyway, keep going. Sorry. Uh, so well, money. I like I was saying, uh, I kind of want to establish where we're all at with Kevin Smith uh, in the past and then also currently. Because uh, I've been a fan of Kevin Smith. I think the first movie of his I saw was probably Dogma, like a replay on Comedy Central when I was like eight or nine years old. And then I, I, I found out uh, more about his films and everything, I think through like Wizard Magazine back in the early aughts. And I got to know him through comic book shit. And then I, I caught a bootleg of Clerks 2 that a friend of mine presented me with back in like 2006 or so. We watched it over his house and it was as good as the copy that you watched of Clerks 3, Hans, nice. minus the uh, casino adverts. 
And uh, I really enjoyed that film. I caught it later in um, the way that it was meant to be presented. And uh, I don't know. I, I've liked almost all of his movies to a point. As soon as we get to, uh, like, Yoga Hosers, then I think it's, like, hitting yeah. the brakes real hard. Um, of his, what's going on with your face, Hans? Your nose is disappearing. Uh -huh. Oh, welcome back to like Hans's nose. <laughs> You're just really flat-faced for a second there. Um, that's, that's not a racial remark. <laughs> yeah. um, All right. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I forgot my rice hat. Let me, let me go <laughs> look for it. <laughs> Dude, you should. You know what? When we start like doing Hong Kong films or something with Jerry again, you know, or we do a follow up to that one movie. What was it a Better Tomorrow or something? You should yeah. just do full. Get one. Like Dude, every patty. time, every time I get a sunburn, I'm like, I wish I could wear one of those <laughs> raw hats. Because... I wish you wasn't uh, so. Uh insensitive to wear one of those right. very it functional really, hats it would yeah. really help me like a lot <laughs> yeah i should just grow this part of my mustache too just this <laughs> mm. yeah no for Let's some see. reason your blurred background is saying that your nose is not part of your face and it's just giving like a flat well, smooth surface there there's just a lot behind me a lot of a lot of pills apparently yeah, mm. yeah it's my what's diabetes. going on there my diabetes. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it got real. Huh? I didn't like that, huh? Yes, I will die. I'll be your dentist <laughs> soon <laughs> enough. Oh, no. Huh? This, will, this will help your diabetes right here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You just uh, have half a chocolate cake off screen that you're eating? <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm super full and uh, I'm not going to eat that right now. Uh, I, like stevia I, chocolate cake is delicious. Uh, <laughs> it's the worst. I, you drink. know what I just heard recently yeah. is they put stevia and i think it's pizza hut's pizza crust were you guys aware of this no yeah so i guess beware of pizza hut unless you like really sweet artificial sweet crust no the uh, sweet is papa john's that's the sweetest sauce it's yeah disgusting. i i never eat papa john's i always go with domino's if i'm slumming it but yeah. kevin smith you know he probably oh, ate yeah. a lot of domino's that was a 300 pound man <laughs> that probably oh, lived yeah. to a heart attack um you know, I watched a Pete Holmes, you know, interview with him recently because I think I watched one review of Clerks 3 and now I get recommended nothing but Kevin Smith videos on YouTube. And it was the most awkward, passive aggressive podcast interview I've ever seen because uh, Kevin is, is telling a story, I think, about how his mom died on the operating table and came back to life. And Pete checks his phone and Kevin calls him out on it and takes offense to it. He's like, oh, so you're fucking bored by my... Like, I saw an aggressive Kevin Smith for the first time That's ever. Awesome. Yeah, not like soft, cucky, pushover Kevin Smith, which I think is, has always been fake all along. Because really? if you watch any behind-the-scenes videos to, like, Clerks 2 or any of these, uh, like, shoots or whatever, he's not a pushover guy, but he poses as one in public, which makes it all the stranger. I can see that. So is that why uh, Silent Bob is like a, a dictator director in this one? Is that him being like, I'm actually a badass? Badass Bob. looks like it's melting. Weirdly. Um, I was a huge fan. I even have the DVDs of the, what was it, Night with... One Night. I watched those after Clerks uh, 3. They're all on like Tubi and they're all four hours long. There's yeah. about five of them. The first two are really good. Yeah. And it coincided well because John Peters was on Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan this past week. And he has a great John Peters story about him trying to shoehorn a metal spider into the Superman Lives script. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I'm curious about one thing here as you go on, Hans. Hmm. And then, Mario, you can answer this as well. Are you more a fan of Kevin Smith, the director, or Kevin Smith, the personality? Because he's made he's established himself just as well as like a, like a soft comedian uh, yeah. Slash definitely one of the uh, like earliest podcasters to take yeah. off and have their own, um, you know, apparatus that was successful with, with uh -huh. Smodcast. And I, I feel like that's its own thing. And it's kind of trickled into his movie making as of maybe Tusk or so um, yeah. and blended it. But I mean, wh which would you say that you're more a fan of? Um, I mean, I respect his hustle and everything like you know, guy, guy's got to make a lot of money somehow. And uh, that's cool that he's the, developed this hardcore fan base. But um, yeah, as far as that whole thing, like bleeding into his movies, like I was kind of uh, happy at the end of this movie because I was like, maybe he can like actually 
like let some stuff go now and like <laughs> try something like fresh because like there was a lot of uh he does like a ton of nodding like you know oh yeah throughout the movie and it's like if he could just stop fucking doing that and like maybe like take a step back from like i'm this uh superhero uh podcast weed celebrity then that could be beneficial for him because i'm not as much of a fan of uh like i went to fucking see that clerk documentary in person where like he talked mm -hmm. and he was just like late as fuck and like telling these stories that had nothing to do with anything and everybody's just eating it up like shit yeah. on a plate and it was like really uh i didn't really i wasn't even crazy about the documentary really and um i could do with a little bit less of that i think i guess i'm more of the uh the movie fan that documentary is full of celebrities being like, yeah, I only agreed to do this documentary in his movie because he almost died. He's probably going to die yeah. again, so yeah. might as well show up before that happens. Go ahead, Hans. I, I think most people were thinking exactly the same thing you just said, uh, Mario, when Clerks 2 came out. Yeah. So he was like, okay, well, he's made his movies about his slackers or whatever, and this is the second one. I think I don't remember if he said that he wasn't going to do a third one or if that was even a thing, but after that... I don't know. I feel like that's when when he tried to go, well, maybe not with Zack and Miri, but then you have Cop Out, you have Red State, you have Tusk. So all of those are not the type of movie that he was making before that. And right. none of them worked <laughs> as well as the other ones did. So maybe that's why he's, you know, threading back into the thing that worked 20 years ago with the uh, James Island Bob reboot and now this. Um, I think... Because I I'm, I was like an early Kevin Smith fan. I think the first movie I ever watched was Mallrats that I bought it for like, you know, those two or three for five dollar DVDs at like a Blockbuster or something. Yeah. And um, his podcast was the first podcast I ever listened to. So I was into the indie, you know, this fat indie director who had opinions and and uh, have, uh, would talk a lot about movie making and, and things like that. And uh, now that I look at this list and after rewatching half of Clerks 1, I think I liked his movies because I liked him. So I liked them more because of that or convinced myself that I liked them more because of that. Uh, because Mallrats is, it's not, it's not very good. Like Mallrats, I think I convinced myself that I liked it, but thinking back, it's like, it's very, I don't know. It's very all over the place. It's very like, unfocused and i think that was maybe his style at the beginning of his career uh but yeah. now when he tries to do that with clerks three it just felt not i don't, I don't know if i should say dishonest but it felt like hey remember when i used to do this type of thing hey you, are you gonna like me again that's how this whole movie felt to me because there was a lot of callbacks it was a lot of maybe not what he did with clerks one because one thing that i still like is that you can really see the indie of the early 90s filmmaking thing uh, with the music, with the way it was shot, the introduction, introduction to the characters with titles and, and how everyone had like a, a little tiny introduction of who the character watch was, which was a very good setup because within two or three minutes, you knew exactly who they were. They were not complicated characters. They were not very deep characters. So you could pretty much show who they were within a couple of minutes. Uh, but yeah, looking back at, at, at his list of movies, I think I convinced myself that I liked them more than I actually did because I enjoyed who Kevin Smith was then. And now that that has been destroyed completely, where I find him kind of unbearable, I, I, I don't have that same, I guess, uh, good what we call it uh, like I, I don't i don't give him a pass as much as before uh yeah. and instead it's like oh jesus are you really oh, all right okay kevin oh we get it oh a, a kite that has what is it what's the joke a uh, higher than a kite on fentanyl oh fucking jesus kevin you know what i mean so yeah all right well, well, well hold on there's something else in play here which is that are you sure it's just not that comedy has changed and so the comedic aspects aren't as charming to you now as Maybe. they were in 2000 or whenever you right. watch Mall Rats? He's, he's a 90s man. So it's yeah, like and, and also podcasts have kind of ruined this type of movie, I feel like, because 
you have the rants from the first clerks and the second clerks where they uh, go off on Lord of the Rings or go off on Star Wars or go off on on nerdy movies that nobody cared about, let's say, uh, back in the day uh, from someone that's not a movie reviewer or an educated person, which is who you would listen to back in the day. And now we have something like this show where you <laughs> where you have yeah. uh, people just talking shit about about that th type of movie. So seeing uh, Randall go off for three minutes about how, I don't know, uh, 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 Chewy has, is hairy down there or whatever. It's not as charming as it was because it's very available now. Right. Uh, and and back in those days, it was like if you if you were to read a review, it, it would usually be like a either a writer that would write a very nice review or in a magazine, not just you know a convenience store guy that had opinions about Star Wars, you know. So that has definitely been influenced by how how much podcasts have not ruined that because if you're listening to this, then that's great. But but you know what I mean? Like it's not it's not as charming as it was back in back sure. in the day. Do you think that encompasses his style, though? Because I feel like he, he's got the same thing that Tarantino has, which is like the long running back and forth between characters. But his is always very pop culture centric. Yeah. And I actually thought that Clerks 3, for the most part, was void of that, uh, especially compared to Clerks 2 in the first one and other movies he's done. He's He definitely has like modern references that don't fe like feel old man-ish, like an old man making jokes about like modern era stuff, like all the cryptocurrency uh, jokes that mm -hmm. take place in that first act. That's pretty painful. Yeah. Um, but on the whole, uh, aside from like one Star Wars reference, it's pretty slim, slim pickings on, on, on this movie. Hmm. I'm trying to think. I didn't really write down many. I, I wrote down a lot of jokes that I thought were very painful the whole yeah. rosario dawson thing was just like oh boy she's having sex the graveyard with scene Mike yeah like malcolm this malcolm xxx you, you, do you get it because he's got to be <laughs> you know it's just like oh jesus all right and and you're right maybe it's because i i don't really find that charming anymore because the uh, exposure and because i find him to be kind of insufferable now but i I, you said that you, you laughed a couple of times. I did laugh a couple of times. times. Yeah. I, I, do you remember w when? You remember uh, the joke? Yes, Elias, I do. Elias like saved it a bit for me. His makeup oh. I enjoyed for the most <laughs> yeah. part. How they changed <laughs> the that out. Was good. Uh, I actually found myself, and I usually don't find him funny at all. I found myself laughing at Jason Mewes in this movie a few times. Um, specifically, two instances that come to mind, because I started watching Clerks 3 again. I watched your copy. Hans, nice. um, just to, as like a refresher, because I watched this movie about a week ago, um, and it was the scene where he's yelling at Dante to keep it down because it's nighttime. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. I thought that was funny. That got an unexpected laugh out of me. And then um, when he interrupts the shoot to ask if something was, like some piece of dialogue was legit, because it reminded me of like shooting comfort systems at Mike Mike's house, mm. and his uncle would be watching. His uncle was like a crackhead guy. And he'd be watching Mike Mike act and I'm like filming him and he would do that. He would go, wait a minute. Is that like for real? Like he would inject himself and, and take whatever was happening seriously. I was like, just, was it I a suck it like a pee pee? Troll? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was around that time. It was around that sketch. Yes. So, uh, yeah, I found myself laughing a couple of times uh, more than I expected. Like, listen, I walked into the theater expecting to just be cringing nonstop and hate the movie. And I didn't hate the movie at all. I did cringe a lot, but uh, still on the whole, probably less. And I do think a lot of the problems that you're talking about, Hans, are concentrated mainly to like the first 30 minutes or 40 minutes of the film. And then it gradually becomes less of a comedic film as it goes on. Yeah, and it just became Dante being a whiny little aw shucks guy that was he was so annoying to me in this movie. Uh, that's something that I noticed in the first one that never bothered me before until this rewatch where everything's oh woe is me oh i'm dante I'm because not they're both to be old just... they're, put, like, they're 50 years old and single and they run a convenience store and that's what their life became yeah so that's what it should be and he, and these these actors have like regular lives in between like these like 15 years in between mm -hmm. each movie, right yeah like, if you check out their wikipedia it'd be like wow what are they up to oh the last thing was clerks 2 
That's the case like, with Elias, at least, too. They're, like, going to Comic Cons and, like, signing fucking photos for 40 bucks a pop. I know that uh, Jeff Anderson tried to do uh, maybe directing or, oh, yeah. or a couple of bit parts for a second, but then was just like, fuck it, I don't care anymore, I'm out. I and have that on DVD, too. I was such a fan of that universe that I got, I think it's called Now You Know or something like that. It's not good. It's a romantic comedy with, with uh, Jeremy Sisto. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> but I was like, hey, it's, it's uh, you know, it's Randall. I'll get it. I like Randall. And um, I th- probably saw it once. Mm-hmm. Did you guys yeah. watch Clerks the cartoon series? Uh, yeah. I have a DVD of that somewhere. Jerry was was going on about that on our Star Wars show, I think, talking about how that was good. And I haven't watched it in about like twenty years, but I do remember enjoying uh, the program. So yeah, I uh, I had an older cousin that was like uh, just like into movies and video games and shit like that, and. Uh, He was like kind of like an older brother figure to me. So when I would like be over at my cousin's house and I'd go down into the basement in his room when he wasn't like, you know, fucking yelling at us or like punching us, he was like showing us pretty cool shit. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was one of like Clerks One was like the first thing that I ever saw. And he just had it on. And then it was like the scene where they were like talking about like snowballing. And Mm -hmm. uh, he was like, go, go upstairs come back downstairs in five minutes and i was I like what? i was like why? Off. <laughs> yeah. not that I, I wouldn't have even known like i didn't even like at the time i don't i don't think i knew what like jacking off was i was like i wouldn't have understood what was going on but he was like no you can't you can't be here for this but then i uh, came back down and finished the movie and uh he introduced me to like a lot of shit my older cousin but yeah him showing me clerks was like one of the first things and then like you know taking me to like wizard world comic con not not too long after that it was like fucking second grade or something so i saw these and then like mall rats is like one of my favorite movies for like uh a long time but like i'm uh just a fucking jason lee super fan mm-hmm. with uh mm-hmm. you know his skate videos and right. uh he was in some fucking pretty good stuff for a long time so uh how yeah. come he wasn't back? How come he didn't get it? Uh, he j- he did the last one. He was probably not impressed. He said, "All right, I did. I, I served my time. I'm out." Yeah. Um, well, he I, got uh, what's his name, Ethan Suplee, to do a cameo, a cameo. there with a, something about the boat. He said, "Yeah, He's yeah, like, from ah, Mar- yeah, get it." Remember? You know who who that? else caught me surpri- by surprise? Who nobody has mentioned? Anthony Michael Hall. Oh yeah. Evil yeah, dies tonight. Hell? Shows up in this movie. That was uh, right. Yeah, I don't know why or how that came about, but uh, cool. Danny Trejo speaking bad Spanish, too. I was like, oh, that's not what we saw. Oh, like. he's easy to get. Okay? <laughs> like, yeah. That's not... yeah. Uh, so do you feel like th- th- there's... All right, you, you clearly were not in on this movie, but you did cite Clerks 2 as your favorite of his works. Yeah. Um, I think this movie is far better than Clerks 2. And maybe look, I for for a period of time, I would say that Clerks Two was probably my favorite of his films too. Until I revisited it last year, and I was like, "Wow, this didn't hold up. Yeah. This is pretty uncomfortable to sit through some of these scenes." Um, and now I would say, uh, I think his best movie is probably Chasing Amy. I think Chasing Amy is the one that probably has held up the strongest. Um, you seen it recently? Yeah, I caught okay. that uh, last year again. Um, after having not watched it in about 10 years. I think we were talking about doing a retrospective on him. And Well, we had Robbie on. We were going to do Clerks, the first movie, and then I think we wound up talking about a bunch of other shit, and so it was just kind of like not that we rethemed the show midway through, and it just didn't didn't happen. Yeah, Jason so. is great. Yeah, hmm. well, one of the things that, that really bothered me here, too, is that how everyone every character was just very quippy and ranty and that amy sedaris doctor character and then the justin long character being like oh you have little penis because hey a working pediatry i thought that was little tiny too. penis you I laughed that at that was, yeah i laughed at that line. <laughs> I, maybe i was just in a bad mood i don't know but I was maybe you're like, watching a cam uh, copy with slotslights.com adverts all over yeah. i don't know there's a you know how the ending is supposed to be very, like touching right it's like well now it's by himself and there's still shenanigans happening in the store and his daughter which is not his daughter in the movie i don't think right 
uh, she's uh, putting away uh, the milk jugs, right, at the end. Yeah, yeah. she's just some girl. Yeah. Um, she's this at the is, funeral, this is what the what the end what the touching ending looked like for me. Um, and then you have this. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's very very touching. Wow. That's the new Dante and Randall. They passed the torch. Yeah. You didn't get that? Yeah, two cricket players that uh yeah, that's was like passing passing the fucking torch to a couple of Indian men. It's great. Amazing. Yeah, I think maybe you would have been uh less harsh on it if you watched like a real version of the movie. Maybe, I don't know. Um Mario, what was your take on this film? Because uh, it's been a lot of Hans ranting about the problems yeah. of it. But I mean, what what is your feeling on this movie, both by itself in Kevin Smith's filmography? Because I don't think you can really talk about this movie fairly as just a movie in general, right? right. Because it's so deeply right. interconnected to the other two films and just his, his body of work. And then also mm -hmm. compared to the previous two films. Well, I couldn't help but, you know, going into it, I thought I was going to get another uh, Jay and Silent Bob reboot for sure. So I was like, going into it, I was like, if it's anything better than that, I'm kind of, I'll be, I'll be okay with, I'll be okay with this movie. And um, it was way better than that. So that already, you know, put me, put me in a better spot. But um, I, I guess I enjoyed just uh, seeing some, seeing some much needed not not even needed but just closure in general just being like i was really glad that they killed him i thought that that was that was a good move and um i just really hope that he could just i don't know maybe he needs like a really intense like weed panic attack or something <laughs> or he's like fuck i thought i had a heart attack again maybe I, maybe i won't be getting so high he needs something dude but i think maybe this uh Hopefully this one kind of really uh, helps him shut many doors and he can stop talking about like, I know it's probably some traumatic shit that he went through with the heart attack. So like he, you know, probably want, it was nice for him to be able to go through all that and uh, do all that, talk about all that stuff. But um, I mean, I enjoyed it. I wasn't like uh, bummed when I left the movie or anything like that. And uh, I was pretty impressed with the, uh, brian o'halloran uh that like he was like able to like deliver such like serious uh serious lines and uh because i'm like this guy's not like acting in between these movies right right and i was like maybe i was like maybe if i was shit-faced this could have made me cry <laughs> there were people like, crying in my theater they really? were definitely yes there were grown adults that were crying in my theater damn so i mean yeah, the guy next to me with the movies shirt probably had tears all yeah. over. <laughs> he was but, uh, leaking. He was his leaking. Out. His udders <laughs> were, were spurting. But uh, no, I, I didn't shed a tear. But I was like, man, if I was still getting hammered at the theater, I think this probably could have got me. So well, Brian, yeah. Brian O'Halloran does a very good uh, performance in a film called Vulgar from 2000. Oh, yeah, because he gets like raped clown. repeatedly by a family of guys. <laughs> he's dressed what up the as a clown. fuck? Yeah. You haven't seen Vulgar? No. That's another like early aughts blockbuster, view askew, Kevin Smith produced film um, where he's like a down on his luck clown and he's going to uh, perform at some party, but it doesn't turn out to be a party. It's just like an older man in his apartment with his two sons and they just rape him repeatedly is yeah. he the guy that you askew logo that, that's the clown yeah uh, maybe i don't know could be <laughs> that's him. oh uh, god i've never heard about this though i watched it for the first time only like a year or two ago it was a pretty beat up copy of the film because they haven't transferred it i don't think it's on streaming anywhere maybe i'm wrong about that but um yeah do uh go off of your oh geez yeah that's uh it. that guy's in clerks three as well right isn't it this guy? Yeah, isn't he like one of the comic book men or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a big beard. Uh, what's his name? Brian. Oh Johnson. yeah, yeah, yeah. One of Brian Johnson, I think. Man. So this movie came yeah, out in what? Two thousand. Two thousand, yeah. Two thousand. That guy does a podcast with E Rock from Opie and Anthony now. Oh uh, really? So, yeah, I don't, I don't know how that happened. It's on Compound Media, I think. So is it about comics and, and it's about like, like Funko that? Pops or something? Yeah. I don't know, whatever. Do you think uh, he's just too deep? Like he's too deep with the self brand of like the just the fucking weed podcast that like it's it's too late. It's mm -hmm. 
it's done. Maybe. Um, I, I will say to what you just said before, I was actually really impressed, even though, look, their acting in this movie is kind of spotty, especially in the first and second act, but everyone's acting is not the best for yeah. any of these films in general. Mm -hmm. But um, I was really impressed with Jeff Anderson and with um, Brian O'Halloran's acting in that third act. I think they sold it. And what this movie, I think, made clear to me is that Kevin Smith, going forward, should try to veer away from comedy. I think uh, maybe like a little bit here and there is probably fine, but I think he nails the drama in this movie 50 times harder than any, any of the comedic bits in Clerks 3. And he's a man that loves to cry. Yes, it's perfect for him. So just keep fucking crying. Keep fucking staying by, like crying behind the camera, dude. Like fuck it. I think it. I think I. I think his death really works in the whole back and forth that they have before he has a heart attack. Uh, is great and probably some of the best directing he's done in like the past fifteen years. Mm -hmm. um, but everything else, I mean, it, it's kind of like you're watching. You're, I don't want to say suffering because I enjoyed the movie, but you're definitely dealing with a very wobbly, mixed up uh, two thirds of the film just to get to like a really good conclusion with those two guys. And like he's got, you know, with like all the time he spends on podcasts, like he's got all the time in the world for dick and fart jokes and, you know, like old, like boomer humor that, you know, really stuck in the 90s that maybe he's uh you know just isn't isn't uh landing the same man mm. uh he can get all that out just ripping joints and talking shit on his like 14 podcasts and yeah i, I guess uh maybe yeah you're right with the more serious route that could be uh that could be cool what is what is he what's upcoming tusk uh, too uh, <laughs> your reaction to that is <laughs> Very, uh, yeah. very subdued. It's, very, uh, yeah. Twilight of the Mallrats. Is that still happening? So he, he's gone through a cycle of like, first it started with Clerks 3. Back in 2012, he was like, I'm going to do Clerks 3. And the original idea for this, and I got intel from one of these, um, he did a, a reading of the script that Jeff Anderson shut down. It was like, I'm not doing that movie. This, this idea fucking sucks. It was essentially um, a lot of Jay and Silent Bob reboot they weren't in the quick stop it burnt down again and um it's just them I, I i forget what the actual plot is but it ends with a movie theater shooting aurora style where dante who's already cancer ridden gets shot up and so um <laughs> jeff anderson's randall is left to take care of dante's uh daughter who is like the black girl from jay and silent bob reboot yeah i heard about that idea so that, that's that gonna be played happen. by his daughter just no that was no. gonna be clerks three right that was good that was the original clerks three up until i want to say like 2017 or so where uh jeff anderson was like no we're not we're not gonna do that but he got side i mean this is the thing with kevin smith too he'll say this is what's up next and then he'll get distracted by some other idea so when clerks three got tabled it went over to twilight of the mall rats which was going to be uh, his mall rat sequel and he had every he went around to like all the actors he met them in person and said will you do this movie and they all said yeah and he posted like pictures each time someone agreed on instagram even ben affleck was like yeah maybe i'll do it, it was like right around the time he won best picture for argo you know um and uh that didn't happen because the the rights i guess were muddled in between a couple of different companies and then he wanted to do it as like a mini series Again, didn't happen. Um, and also in that time, he was going to do a hockey movie called Hit Somebody, which didn't happen either. That yeah, also was going to get turned into a, to a series. Movie. Got a little bit out in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. And no um, jaws. We're, not, we're never going to get Moose Jaws. I maybe so. I mean, he's going to Tusk too, right? So yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, what is the whole, what is the Degrassi Canadian fetish that he has? He's a New Jersey man. I don't understand the fucking Canadian shit. Every movie. Hans, you you've been to, um, you lived in Canada. What is it? I What's did. the appeal? I don't know. I don't know. I don't like you it. Just like, You're from New Jersey. Hans. I don't live there anymore. <laughs> I, don't I don't know. I really don't understand it. 
I guess know. I guess they were nice to him because he would does always he have, sell like, out. Massive, does he? Have, is it like fan service? Yeah. Is it like a massive Canadian audience. I think he recorded one of those DVDs in in a big theater in, in Toronto, so he probably has like a big audience there. I've never understood that, but um... yeah. oh god, I'm I'm going through his Instagram see if I can find any of those pictures that you're saying. But he is it just this photos old of his man face covered in tears. A lot, yeah, a lot of just his face doing that doing this face yeah and <laughs> and uh, uh yeah it's, it's probably good. that though it's probably just fan service like you said. Mm -hmm. it really it seems like in the 90s you could make like one like masterpiece and uh just work for like 35 years after that and like i don't think that that hap that's not like a way that you could pull off a career anymore well he was what in that same wave that tarantino came in right it's like yeah. New yeah, there was, an, there was an article that says the next Scorsese, and it's, I mean, they did it with a couple of different directors, which people and don't I, mention when it gets passed around, because then that takes the humor away from it. But it says I, the next Scorsese, Kevin Smith. I have, I do have a question oh. for you yeah. about, um, speaking of Scorsese, who was praising the movie Pearl. Which I saw that. Everybody in my Twitter feed was sucking it off, except for you who i think gave it one and a half stars yeah, i did yeah and uh people i mean look i i follow a couple of people on letterbox anyway who agree with that who aren't uh fans of what ty west is up to i love ty west i think you know he was one of my favorite directors bar none uh of the last decade i i quite oh, yeah. enjoyed house of the devil the innkeepers the sacrament Those are and great. then um you know X just didn't do it for me. It seemed like a big step back. And I went back and watched In a Valley of Violence, his movie with James Ransone and Ethan Hawke and John Travolta. And that's a that's a very good Western. That's a great movie. X just, it sucked. It was just, all right, he wanted I to do- I haven't seen any of his uh, A24 things. You're probably better for it. I mean, it just felt like he wanted to do Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but then got Mia Goth and Maybe it was like into her or something because Shia LaBeouf was fucking like three different girls at the same time and they developed right. some ideas and he's looking for more of a reason to work with her. Right. And that's how Pearl came along. It was her idea. Yeah, and everybody's that, just going out. It's like, great right. time to be a horror fan. And I'm just like, I haven't seen any of this shit yet, but I'm like... Fuck uh, no, Tusk uh, 2 is going to blow that out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> she was the worst character of that too. The one that annoyed me the most on X. Uh... Is it because she had no eyebrows? <laughs> well, that was that was kind of jarring, but also I just I I I thought she was very one note, very like just boring performance. Uh, uh, and I I was also a huge fan of his, and uh, I did see some people being very positive about it. But I remember when we recorded our, our episode on X, and I think you, you Laura said that they were going to do that, and we we're all like, "Is that shouldn't he be focusing on on some three? Yeah, Maxine comes out uh, probably next year. I don't think they've actually shot that one yet, um, but they dropped the trailer to it right after the credits of Pearl. I'm getting kind of burnt out on these, like, uh, everything exists in my own little film world of, uh, you know, trilogies that aren't really sequels, but prequels. And, mm. yeah. and like, A24 is no longer, like, this, like, hipster thing. It's, like, it's just, like, is you know, it's, it's like, uh, it's not not like that it ever. became a parody of what it was supposed to be now it's yeah like just... they're doing like animated shit and i don't know well everybody's going to the theater to see marcel the shell right which is now in the letterbox 250 greatest films of all time so right here in no, yeah <laughs> uh, even criterion is starting to waver i mean look i i you called it like five years ago five years ago everyone will catch up to me that's all right that's fine <laughs> people caught on to vincent gallo being cool in time um yeah wally's in the criterion collection now which i looked at i like wally but uh disney in the criterion collection just feels kind of funny to me i don't like yeah i don't like where that goes because then all of a sudden you're probably going to have like the I've Lion heard, King 2, yeah. Simba's Pride in there before you know it. Yeah. Eternals. Well, uh, you know who's a Criterion director is Kevin Smith. You got Chasing Amy in there. They were making a lot of questionable. People say questionable. I agree with all these decisions in the late 90s for what movies were going to go in the Criterion collection. Chasing Amy, Armageddon, yeah. The Rock. 
I guess when you have to appeal to a larger larger audience, because you, I guess you're not making enough money with your indie classics that you put out. Uh, but but if that's what you were known for, it makes no sense to me that they're they're branching out to just gigantic movies now. Uh, well, here here's what's happening, right? Is the uh, the distribution portion of uh, many of these companies like Warner and Disney aren't making money off physical media so much as um, streaming. Mm -hmm. So they don't really care about that and they want to outsource that. So all these big titles are going to become more available to boutique distributors like Criterion and Arrow. And you're going to see like very deluxe versions uh, selling for 30 and $40 a piece because that's where the money can be made from these smaller companies that are putting out um, more, more um, I don't know, just better versions of these films. Well, they're not getting my money until they start making VHS again. They'll do that. I think they'll do that. It seems oh, like I'm that's catching fine. on. I don't even look at the DVDs anymore. I got such a VHS boner. I'm just fucking stacking these things up against my wall. Mm -hmm. Ten feet high. Well, the good thing about VHS is, is that I don't know how the rights work for those, but there's a lot of even people on Instagram that just make modern movies and they put it into VHS so you can just do that. And yeah, you probably won't get too. bothered. You're not going to get a cease and desist from a company if you're putting out VHS copies of it. I have a VHS of um, Mad Max, Fury Road, and It, the 2017 one, over over here. And I made a, a couple for um, Good Time and uh, what else is over there? Like 2001. I don't know. But um, I was going to say something before. Oh, yeah, yeah. I noticed on Instagram you've been posting like your VHS hauls. Yeah. And you got like a good batch on the last go around. Yeah, I just got another good one out here in Michigan. I just where are you out. collecting them? Um, like, where am I buying them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I'll if I find uh, if I if I'm like looking for something, I'll just eBay it. But um, there's this place, uh, there's like a chain store around where I live called Disc Replay, and uh, they usually have a good assortment. And uh, so that's where I get shit in Illinois. And then uh, there's a spot in LA called Cinephile that usually has a, a pretty good assortment and uh, that like cycles pretty quickly. So like if I go in there like once a month, there's um, there's a pretty good, uh, you know, section to uh, choose from. But uh, other than that, yeah, I mean, I just hit a fucking garage sale and got like 30 VHS for like three dollars. Nice. Actually, my brother, my brother picked it up for me and uh, she was like, um, okay uh two dollars she was like these were my husband's he just passed away no. and my brother was like my brother was like all right i'll give you three because her husband died uh, condolences <laughs> yeah i was like frank you tipped her a dollar because it was her <laughs> he was like yeah i felt bad hans what's the last vhs tape you you remember buying never i've never bought it you've a never VHS owned a vhs tape? tape no we were really poor so we never had a vhs when i was growing up uh so and also it was very difficult to get those things here uh, i think i knew one friend that had like a copy of titanic or something which was like three vhs's i think or something there's like two that. but okay two but would you borrow one of them no i've never i didn't have a vhs mm. so you didn't no. have a vcr i mean vcr yeah yeah i didn't have one of those growing up wow. and then you know when dvds came out and they started making them more portable you can get one for like 50 bucks then that's what that's when they started collecting but before that vhs was like bougie for me you know same with like having a playstation or or you know when that came out it was entertainment was too bougie yeah. for you. <laughs> yeah entertainment was like uh watch soccer and like very early go throw uh, dialogue a rock internet. over the fence yeah just Go yeah, for so a walk. I well, I did. I'm old enough to have played uh, marbles outside of my house. You know, Jesus so, uh, fuck! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ooh, I had some Pokemon marbles. At least that I had <laughs> characters on them. No, nope, no, nope. it was just glass balls with the little tiny flowery check. things in the middle. Yeah, tiny and, checkers uh, without the board, huh? Yeah, it's just like, hey, this one's Matt. Isn't that cool? <laughs> <laughs> Pause, did you ever play kick the can as a kid? No. No. It's like, I'm not old enough to, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the, back in the day, they would play with like a, 
it will be like a how can I explain this? Like the the can no 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 it's like a like a circle right but it's only a wire and then you would push it with a stick and go down a hill. No, no 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 but no you would push it with a stick and you would run and the thing would, yes. you would chase after it down like a hill. dog yeah like a dog on yeah, a like racetrack it. yeah i never did that i'm not old enough uh but in my third world country grow up so yeah we did a lot of marbles we did uh bootleg legos that was big was bootleg <laughs> what like the wooden legos no just like a bucket of like five thousand pieces but they were not lego brand they were just they're just wood chips legos. from the playground no they were plastic <laughs> oh yeah we didn't have wood chips we didn't have bougie fucking third world country. <laughs> wood is bougie <laughs> yeah <laughs> we have dirt and rain oh. no lincoln logs out there no. don't even know what that is no. <laughs> uh, l- all right, let's let's get back on Kevin Smith. I want to know what you guys think of like the second phase of his career because we didn't really talk about that. Um, we did get into the whole View Askew universe, but he does have, um, it wasn't intended as a trilogy of horror films, but it is kind of that now. He's got Red State, Tusk, and then Yoga Hosers. And those are like the three, I'm doing genre pictures now. Um, the last time I was truly like, fuck yeah, excited. I was probably high as fuck in my room watching Red State. I was probably 19 years old, maybe 18 years old. I was stoned out of my brain and I watched Red State on my little TV in my room. And I was like, he's fucking moving on to a whole new territory. I was like, I'm so excited. Like he's going to be this badass fucking horror action director. And uh, that was probably the last time I was like really excited. There was a lot of hype around Red State because it was such a different turn for Kevin Smith, especially after Cop Out left a sour taste in everybody's mouths. And uh, he, like, very pettily ranted about Bruce Willis on the Mark Maron podcast and made that a whole controversy. That was also the time he got kicked off the plane for being too fat. He didn't want to buy the extra seat and he couldn't fit into his seat. Mm -hmm. Too fat to fly. That's right. So, so catchy master of marketing kevin smith <laughs> really did he is. end up suing or he just got a bunch of publicity from it right i don't think he sued i don't think he needed to sue they probably i don't know something might have happened with that i have no idea he's not that fat anymore so he doesn't have to worry about it but um yeah red state was like the big thing where it was also this is not um age very well he called his llc the harvey boys after oh. Harvey Weinstein, that's on the back of the Red State Blu-ray disc. <laughs> and then he goes on to tell a story about how um, he named it after Harvey Weinstein. Harvey was his boy. In the screening to Red State, Harvey, like, leaves after five minutes or something <laughs> and then yells at him when he, like, walks out to try and, like, pull him back or whatever. Um, and then he tours the movie. That's the start of the whole roadshow era of his filmmaking career. And... Um, People seemed positive on it at the time it came out. Yeah. What I about mean, now? The fandom, the fandom is really fucking insane. It's baffling to me. I mean, there was even like movies, pop-up hamburger restaurants in Chicago and fucking all over the U.S. And it's uh, it's that's a feat in itself. Probably more impressive than a lot of his filmmaking is that he's just found this fucking cash cow just slanging like signed dvds and you know i mean fuck pictures the movie you might as well just fucking <laughs> really run them well he yeah i guess he he makes them cheap and then just shows them to people that he knows will go see them anyway well no i think that's a problem money. at the like, same time and also this this ties into the pete holmes podcast um he noted he kind of mentioned this in passing he was like do you ever just like because he was trying to like be real with Pete Holmes, but Pete Holmes is Pete, incapable of being real. He's just like an guy. annoying, silly. Isn't isn't the podcast called uh, "You Made It Weird"? I think yeah. or something like that. Yeah. So um, that's he kept trying to like actually connect with him, but Pete Holmes was not like present for the the interview. And he was like, "Do you ever just like sit and observe your numbers or study your numbers and wonder why your fandom is shrinking?" <laughs> And um, I think that makes sense when you think about like Jay and Silent Bob reboot and how that had a limited like uh, screening or whatever. But I think that actually got ushered out and had like legitimate theatrical release because Saban bought it. And then Clerks 3 is 
what this is where you have to drive two hours to go see it or watch it with some black uh, actor model putting fake money into a blender and interrupting the film every three to five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it was, it was cool though. It was like, I was like not expecting the theater to be so nice. Cause once I rolled into that town, I was like, Oh sh shit. I was like, where the fuck am I? And then it was like <laughs> this big ass theater that was like, it looked like the tallest building in the whole fucking town and like still had the lights, like every, like, and I was like, Oh, thank God. It's like a legitimate fucking, uh, like it, the whole town's economy must be based on movie tickets. Mm. But, but uh, it, it it, a nice place. it's such a weird thing if you put them side to side, though, because so he does, or he is, I guess, I guess, back to making movies for his fa fans. But at the same time, he has this persona of being like corporate, everything corporate. I love. So I feel like those two things kind of contradict each other because what he makes is not for everyone, but everything he likes and everything he enjoys and tries to get into or weasel his way into directing an episode of The Flash or what was the other show that he, The Goldbergs, he directed three episodes. Did he that. direct The Goldbergs? Apparently. Oh, wow. Three episodes, Supergirl he directed. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I think he does. All right, so there is that dichotomy that I think Kevin Smith shares with only one other artist who operates in the same way as him and that artist is lena dunham in which somehow the art will seem more aware of those problems than the person yeah right so when you take a look at lena dunham anytime she opens her mouth you just want to tell her to shut the fuck up like you yeah. sound stupid you're ruining everything shut up uh go away uh, but then you watch like one of her movies and she like addresses certain criticisms and it's like so are you aware of a lot of the, even though you, you're saying like the exact opposite of what you're conveying in the film, are you somehow aware of whatever the deeper truth there is? And I feel like with Clerks 3, there's the opportunity to be like, we're going to set up a whole, we're going to revisit the view askew universe and we're going to expand this and we're going to milk this and we're going to do this and that. And then he kills Dante and you don't, you can't do that. So it's like, he's doing the opposite of what he loves in the media he's consuming. Yeah. Right. And it's almost like he's trying to differentiate himself from that. Like, no, I'm an artist, even though he doesn't maybe do that in the most um, obvious, right. obvious way, I'll say. Um, it's kind of him being like, no, it's time to put a cap on this. And like he's trying to build some integrity, maybe. Um, what, you, you, you disagree? I think, I think you might be giving him too much credit. Well, then why know. kill Dante? Well, he's always because, well, he always wanted to kill Dante, right? That's true. All right, that's true too. Great. Yeah, he's been waiting. Well, wasn't that him too? It's him and the script and the original. Clip no, he or... was going to be Randall. Right. Wow. Yeah. Right. Can you imagine well, that? Uh, no, well, I think Jeff Anderson was born to play that character, and that's the only thing that I've seen him in where it seems natural coming out of his, the dialogue coming out of his mouth. Um, but I mean, what else can you do with this? It's trilogy where could he Do have gone they just end the same way as second did which is because that's how this ends there's just one less guy right the the last kind of what 10 minutes are very similar in the way that he, can't, the he can't have his fucking can't have his daughter take over the fucking cash register yeah, because, because no one. that fucking bridge with yoga hosers yeah uh, it must exactly. have been where, he, where could he have gone have rosario dawson is dead Right. So what is he going to do a full movie with uh, what's the Elias like Elias works as that character. He wouldn't work in like a, a role where you need him to be more half the movie in the story. Exactly. Right, no. yeah. yeah. So that, I mean, it's probably the only way where he could who could have ended this or both of them dying. I don't know, because it, it does have like a, a bittersweet ending because you have uh, Randall just by himself now and he still hates that he works there, right? He's still the same guy that hasn't really grown much. Uh, so then at the end, it's just, well, now it's just me by myself. I have no one to rant to and that's life. You know, it's not, it's not very cheery. It's kind of like a, you know, this guy, you. I guess it, the, the message of him not appreciated Dante though, that, that like that whole fight felt very much like the fight that had on Clerks 2. 
yeah. uh, where it's like, I'm going to tell you your truths and the same truths I told you 10 years ago in the other movie. I'm going to tell you again because you're a jerk. Uh, and then he's like, oh, you know what? You're actually my best friend. I'm going to appreciate you. And then he dies. And it's like, all right. I, I, I have no idea where he could have gone to continue this, you know, unless. I think he just knew it was for the better. Yeah, it's just done. Especially if it took him how long? Uh, 15, 16 years? To uh, that people? was 2006, so it's yeah. been 16 years. Yeah. He, I, uh, I don't think he's like, I don't want to be like a grandpa and shit, like doing this, this, this story. Like anymore, probably. Mm -hmm. like, he yeah. was also probably sick of his fans asking for it, which is where I'm sure a lot of the push for, for him to make this came from, you know. You think so? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, maybe. I, I don't really observe those circles quite like that. But um, I, I don't know. I feel like the there hasn't been a cry for we need another Clerks that's been over the top anyway. Was I mean, if anything, it's... It's probably something like another mall, maybe another mall rats. I don't know. Was there a cry for the Jay and Silent Bob reboot? Fuck no. no. I don't. I don't think anyone wanted that. What about the weed animated movie that he made? I, I don't that? think he directed that. I think he only wrote oh. that. No. Oh, okay. You know, it's know a good I... underrated Kevin Smith movie that got a lot of flack but doesn't deserve it. It got a lot of flack because it just had Ben Affleck in it. Is Jersey Girl. I thought Jersey Roll. I don't think I've ever even seen it. A lot of people skip that one because that was around the time G. Lee came out and it had that stench to it because mm -hmm. J. Lo's in that movie too. Yeah. So and is, that, is that more like a traditional romantic comedy, I guess? I guess so. I mean, it's it's not it, it's not overtly Kevin Smithy. Um, there's no Jay and Silent Bob in it. It's, uh, I don't know. I, I, I feel like it, it's a little bit of... Uh, it's a little bit of Clerks 3, a little bit of maybe Chasing Amy, a little bit of Zack and Miri, but uh, probably better done mm. than at least Zack and Miri and most of Clerks 3. All right. I'm not going to tell you I'm going to check it out, but I believe you. Well, we're going to cover it <laughs> next week on movies, so you won't have to worry about that. We're gonna, this is leading into our Kevin Smith retrospective. Yeah. The Yoga Horsers and Jersey Girl back to back i've given that yoga hoses movie so many chances to like maybe maybe this time it'll work out and uh, no it doesn't maybe now because austin butler's a star and he's in that movie you know maybe yeah. now it'll be good no never looking in the same way ever again by the way if you check out any interview of his now uh he just still talks like elvis yeah have you have yeah. you guys seen that at all yeah, I saw that. that's a little peculiar it's a little strange yeah, that is a little weird. Uh, but, yeah. Hans, what, what what would you give then? Uh, would you say that Clerks 3 is a step down from Clerks 2? I think... Ah, uh, fuck. I just I haven't seen Clerks 2 in a while, so I, I don't know if I would be as uncomfortable as I was watching this um, because of the humor. But... Uh, to me it is just because of how much i enjoyed that one when it came out and how many times i've rewatched it and i didn't really have a good time with this it might have been but you know it, i was gonna say it might have been because i i watched it with ads <laughs> and with not great quality and with an audience that would laugh in awkward moments and clapped at the end but that's how i saw elvis too and i did like elvis well, so hold I on think... now i feel like if you're given something of a superior product it's still going to shine through uh, I don't know if well, that's a good is... comparison to say, all right, well, we've got these two things side by side. But what does that say about Clerks 3 then? Where it's well, not it just a, means it's, it's, it's not, not a, as good as Elvis. It's not a visually appealing movie, though. What am I losing from watching this copy that I wouldn't get from a regular copy other than better quality? Probably uh, Brian O'Halloran's wrinkles. Right. You know, it's very obvious makeup, <laughs> very yeah, sweaty that... face. The third, the third movie in the franchise always has the most responsibility and, uh, to, you know, to wrap things up. And uh, it's usually never my favorite. Like, even if you want to talk fucking Star Wars and, uh, like, you know, Dark Knight Rises or whatever, like, the third movie, I don't know if I can think of a time where I'm, like, third one best, hands down. Like, the third one. Oh, I don't know. Actually, um, 
I just started that Dahmer series and he's like watching Exorcist 3 in that movie or in the Netflix show. He's like, I watch Exorcist 3 every day. And uh, <laughs> I think this is why I'm so sick. And uh, Wow, really? And then, uh, How is and, that, uh, by the way? Because I like, well, I'm not going to say I like Dahmer, but I, I think his story is very interesting. I saw the first episode and honestly, like it wasn't bad. I saw the first episode and then I saw the credits and it said written by Ryan Murphy. Yeah, that's what like, I'm... Oh, fuck. And then I yeah. was like, wait, this could be, but it's, it's co-written. So I'm like, hopefully ryan murphy's not doing dick and his co-writer <laughs> is actually just good and this is going to be good because the first episode was sweet so i don't know but um yeah i think exorcist 3 is the shit i just love that movie and um other than that though third movie is fucking hard to uh come through being like the best i i feel yeah it's a it's a tough spot to there's just so Put much all together. You know? mm -hmm. there's so fucking much with the first two to like live up to the first two movies and then also tie everything together and it just seems impossible i'm trying to think off the top of my head if any would fit the uh the meet the criteria of being the best film in a trilogy i don't think so though Lord i mean the rings? that one best picture right but that was really for the entire series i i mean i haven't watched any of those movies Never? No. Oh, wow. You've never seen them? No, I've seen the Bakshi one from the late 70s or early 80s. That's it, Animated. though. Right. Yeah. What about the Hobbit movies? Wasn't that a trilogy? Maybe the third one was best? No, there's two. There's only two. I there's think. only two? Yeah. It's oh. fucking terrible. Uh, Godfather? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Back Dude, I have that on VHS, and it's like this fucking wide, because each one is a double VHS, mm -hmm. so it's like six in a fucking box. It takes up an entire shelf. Have you guys seen the uh, the re-edit that Francis Ford Coppola did uh, of Godfather 3, Godfather Coda? I think it was released in 2020 or 2021. I haven't, but I'd watch it. I'm interested in, in checking it out, but I have not uh, seen it. I haven't seen Godfather 3 in a, in a while. Um, all right, so then, Mario, where would you put Clerks 3 as far as this trilogy goes? Well, it has been a minute since I've seen Clerks 2, but I think Clerks 2 also worked extremely well for the time. Mm -hmm. And, like, even the jokes and, like, the donkey show and just, like, you know, fucking Jason Mewes was still fucking really funny. Mm -hmm. yeah. And just, like, his character was just, like, fucking still on fire, I feel like. Um, I don't know how his life was like. <laughs> to be I think that was like the worst point in his life. Yeah. yeah. Well, like we thought he still ruled and then I uh, fucking, uh, now, but then it's like, I feel like this movie, you know, it obviously works better for like the time period and like how, uh, it had to be a little bit more serious, you know, because he's, uh, yeah, I miss, uh, I miss those teeth. Uh, what the? Hold on. <laughs> Scroll up, please. Go back to that first uh, line of photos. What? What is that one? Yep, that's the one you're hovering up. What the fuck happened? Is that better or worse? He's got kind of like a Vincent Gallo shaped face in those photos. <laughs> <laughs> oh does. man. Dude, yeah. His, his, face has, has been through uh, the many faces. Yes. Were they? Because I remember this. That's that just looks normal, you know. It's not yeah. as jarring as, like, as that, <laughs> you know. Oh, yeah, I don't know. That that was the uh, first thing I noticed in this new movie. I was like, oh Jesus, what the fuck? What is happening in his mouth? Yeah, his teeth look painful to be in his mouth. Um, I don't know. I guess maybe right now I would still think back to Clerks Two, like being uh, more enjoyable, just because maybe it just like wasn't such a a downer and like i'm kind of like watching something end and like maybe that kind of is a little bit of a bummer in itself where like clerks 2 was just like fun mm -hmm. like and you know i just felt like i was being uh entertained instead of watching like you know i'm watching this movie but i'm also thinking about like kevin smith's like life and shit and like it's just it's just uh in my head it was way messier like instead of just like going to the theater and like when i saw clerks 2 
I like, uh, you know, I had like a MySpace and like put it in my top friends because I was stoked to watch. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the official page was mm. like my number five top friend. And uh, I was fucking excited. And like now I'm like, okay, I'm watching a conclusion of, uh, you know, and it's this man that's like, I fucking made a movie. And he's just smoking the biggest fucking joint. I'm just thinking about him at his house. Like, yeah, I made a movie, man. I fucking risked it all. And I'm just like, I can't, I don't want to think about that. Like, I just want to watch the fucking movie. It's hard. And then the first one, it's kind of all over the place too. It doesn't really have much of a plot. It's a lot of just like, well, this is what happens when you work at a convenience store. And it's presented like that, which is why I think it works. Um, Cause the, yeah, what's the what's the main conflict there? They hate their lives, so they don't want to be there, right? Right. That's so. look, you. You kind of have to look at that one different, and um, not even really in line with two and three. Two and three have much more of a shared vibe than that first one. Yeah. That first one arrived at a time where you had Kevin Smith, Richard Linklater, Hal Hartley, like all these guys going and shooting their movies themselves. And if you take a look, look, I, I mean. We talk about Kevin Smith's decline quite a lot. Richard Linklater is still making Hollywood pictures. Uh, of those three guys, I, I probably think Kevin Smith's movies are the best yeah. now, like currently now. Uh, Hal Hartley hasn't made like a good movie in a long time. Richard Linklater, he just kind of delivers very boring. I'll never uh, forgive him for Boyhood. I'll never uh, forgive him. So I painfully dull. One day. I, just, so, ooh, I hated that movie so much. Yeah, if you're going to make a movie that's going to take, what, 10 years to make, can you think of a plot that's interesting, maybe? Something other than, look at this boy, he's old now. Dude, that was just Great. an experiment. Experiment yeah. for the fucking laboratory. <laughs> Not for I was movie. so happy that Birdman beat that movie for Best Picture at the Academy yeah. Awards that year. Yeah. Um, he has some movie out on Netflix this year that is, um, the, it's in the same uh, animation style as A Scanner Darkly. I think it's called like Apollo 11 and a half. It's called Apollo 10 and a half. A 10 and space a half. age childhood. Yeah. Sucked. You saw it? Yeah, I watched it. Because Kino said, this movie's great. I, lo I love Austin, Texas. This movie's great. I was like, all right, I'll check it out. And I said, fuck this movie. This is a piece of shit. Fucking wasted 90 minutes of my time. <laughs> Asshole fucking Kino. Liar. <laughs> Liar. Uh, so I won't watch that movie again. Richard Linklater, I think he's just kind of a boring guy now. You know? Mm -hmm. Do you think that this movie, Clerks 3, is like Three from Hell? No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take that big of a shit on it. Um, but <laughs> you guys have talked about the, uh, you know, Rob Zombie, Kevin Smith kind of. Uh, and that's kind of what I, was, what I was getting at. Like, talking about, like, your debut masterpiece and then you're just able to work forever and like there was a time where like i think you could have a career that has like a long tail on it and like now even if you have like a fucking you know smash smash success like you still have to follow it a couple times before you're like living on easy street mm. and uh i feel like in the 90s those guys kind of uh you know I don't know. It was just a different, different time, but, um, I don't know. Like how long did you have to kill it for back then? Um, you know, I, I think the nineties is probably a more unique era because that was the first real instance of people picking up the equipment themselves and then, uh, selling their movies that they shot with their own money to other studios and being able to prove that they could deliver a feature for like a very inexpensive cost, like two, I think even Chasing Amy, that was his third film after Mallrats bombed at the box office. He, he did that for a budget of like $200,000. Uh -huh. So you could, if I mean, and you also have to keep in mind the, the playing field was much more uh, empty back then. So you're already picking from a pool of people that have proven themselves Whereas now anybody can do that. Anyone can get in and out of there like it's nothing. And uh, I think it's more difficult to sustain that sort of career because there are a lot of directors from like the past 10 years that do one or two movies, flame out, and then that's the last you hear from them. Like what about the guy who did It Follows and Under the Silver Lake? That dude yeah. was a big up, up and coming budding director with A24. They didn't like Under the Silver Lake. Where is he now? Um, who knows what that guy's up to? So. 
Yeah, I think um, that was probably the last real era where if you had one good movie, you could parlay that into just a long-term career in Hollywood doing something. Yeah. They could wait. Like, they could wait for what was next. Yeah. And now there's no fucking patience like that. Now, I only compare Clerks 3 to um, 3 from Hell because I think what the intention there was is pretty similar. And it also was released very similarly where it was a Fathom event. Um, I guess they consider Kevin Smith unproven at the box office as of right now. They don't trust him to get a wide right. release. Right. And um, Rob Zombie, similarly, I think, what was his movie that came out right before that? Um, was it? Lords of no, it's thirty one. I, I think it was called My Wife's Ass. <laughs> <laughs> My wife's. It's a subtitle on all of his features. Um, thirty one was crowdfunded. That didn't do well. You can watch that on Tubi for free right now, and yeah. uh, it's really bad. Is that the, his worst? You think? I think I have it as his worst. And I watched the Monsters. I did watch the Monsters. Damn, I'll still watch. I'll watch that. I the Monsters. Not as bad as the the trailer looked. It's just, I I mean it, it's uh, it runs like any one of these Netflix shows. To be honest with you, um, just feels like a a weird long pilot episode to a series. That's it. Is this like the end of like them there being guys that like will just watch any any piece of shit they make just because it's them? Like, is that over? Or like, like are younger people like are they gonna have anyone like that? Where like. We're, I'm just down with Rob Zombie and Kevin Smith. So, like, if they put something out, like, I don't even care if it's a piece of shit. I'm just going to watch it. Just yeah. Just whatever. Like, do our people, like, younger than us going to have anything like that where they're like, yeah, I'm kind of rooting for this guy because I liked him. And then, eh, I'll watch his shit, whatever. I'll buy it. I think that's definitely less so the case because of uh, environments like Twitter and Letterboxd where you get much more credit for shitting on a movie than you do for being like an ardent supporter or genuinely liking something. I think you get rewarded for cynicism much more on um, those platforms. Definitely. So uh, there's less incentive to see how a director's career plays out. And also for the same reasons that we discussed only moments ago, where it's like, they're not going to get the same opportunity necessarily from a studio mm -hmm. uh, where they're going to have the, the chance to direct a 15 to $30 million uh, feature, because if that one flops, then, it might not have a life on streaming and they might just be persona non grata after that. So yeah. I think it's just, a, I mean, it's a different time, but I think film fans in general are much snarkier and they think they know everything about what there is to know about movies. And they'll point out all sorts of problems. Look, we do it every week on this show. We, yeah. sh we shit on movies way more than <laughs> yeah. uh, we, we like compliment them probably, yeah. but I still think we're pretty fair. Or at mm -hmm. least I'm pretty fair, which is why I gave Clerks three, three and a half stars. Yeah, I, give him, <laughs> yeah. I give him one and a half. Yeah. Oh. I, I, as soon as I left the theater, I was like, Hans is going to hate that movie. I know <laughs> Hans is not going to like this movie. I also think the fact that everything is owned by Disney or, you know, it's a, it's a big corporation that's in charge of a lot of small or has absorbed a lot of smaller companies that maybe would have taken more risks that they do kind of got rid of that because now the movies that they put out are movies that they know uh, is, are going to return a profit and a lot of those are not really director based movies it's more like director for hire so that they don't you know they don't make it too too quirky or too weird uh so you don't have the and uh and this is probably not the greatest thing to say but you don't have a harvey weinstein anymore that's going to take risks with this indie directors and, and just say you know what this work and, and maybe not the, the same nice words uh, would say this works I like this or I want to put this out because he did help a lot of up and coming artists from that time yeah. get their movies done and who's doing that anymore you know and now it's a corporation it's not really a producer that's you know we know we go to this guy because this guy puts quality now it's you know it's a Disney movie or this is a you know you He's don't you lose out there. on so many interesting filmmakers if you remove Miramax from the equation in the 90s. And that's just a fact. Um, there's nobody who's really in that position now. Actually, that's not true. Jason Blum is in that position now. and He's fucking it up. He's picking the worst uh, people, making the worst movies yeah. imaginable. 
Um, he's the only guy really that is like that. I think Jim Cummings is trying to be that guy and it ain't working because uh, he's thinking too big in scope and he should just focus on directing. Uh, there's a couple of people that are like that, but they're not, they don't have the, the resources and the access that somebody like Weinstein had. So you're not going to get that in a similar fashion anyway, until I think the whole studio system reconfigures itself and, and defines what the distribution process is going to be going forward. Because, I mean, in 2020 and 2021, it seemed like, all right, theaters are dead. Nobody's going to the theater. We got to focus on streaming. Let's green light a bunch of shit for streaming. But um, the whole play now is, is very different because of movies like Top Gun, um, where it's almost like the 1970s or 1980s where less yeah. movies are going to theaters and they're staying in theaters for longer. Mm -hmm. You know, I saw Elvis whenever it came out, was it May or something? And then I checked late in the summer, it was still playing in theaters. You know, that's something that was happening decades ago. So yeah, I think it really, um, I think the narrowing of the field in that regard is going to be maybe helpful in getting better movies made and put out. Um, but whether or not that translates into good or interesting filmmakers has yet to be seen. So far, what do you think? <laughs> what do I think of what? So far, how many interesting film? Is there anyone that would put a movie out that you would say, OK, well, it's this guy. So I don't care what the movie's about. I don't care who's in it. I'll go see it because it's this guy directing. Can Kevin Smith. I just saw that movie. That was Clerks 3. We're talking about it tonight. Right. Yeah. No, I, he is on the list. Look, I'll, I'll see. And, and it's really like a bunch of 90s filmmakers. Um, it's Kevin Smith. It's Spike Lee. It's Rob Zombie. I know I'm going to be disappointed. I'll still watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Who do you, who do you think modern uh, Eggers maybe is probably one of the few that still have? I'm not even that impressed. Reference with him, a couple of years ago. I, yeah, people so people like Eggers. Like. People people like Ari Aster, the A24 darlings. Mm. Yeah. That's about it, though. I mean, is there anyone not in horror that has that title? Who's just maybe Damien Chazelle for now? Yeah. Until people get tired of his stick yeah that trailer to babylon didn't do it for me and i was looking forward to that movie too i like the cast i love that eric roberts is somehow in there um love that eric roberts is like these gigantic hollywood movies but at the same time he's making like this direct to not even to be <laughs> movies mm -hmm. just like direct to whatever i can put direct it to in. one man's iphone <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 that are shot in the, in the trailer that they rented that they're yeah. currently living in yeah i it guess was, yeah, when you're fucking, once you get up there, when you're what, fucking 60 years old, 10 grand is 10 grand, and it really doesn't matter how you get it. When you yeah. need to keep the alcohol going. Uh, <laughs> it's not even, I don't even, I, look, I don't even think he's oh, yeah. drunk. I think he's, from what I've heard, this, is, this aligns with his uh, stint on celebrity rehab, but from what I've heard from somebody who worked with him, he is a massive, like crazy, insane pot smoker and does it just constantly around the clock to like a debilitating <laughs> degree somehow. Wow. Um, yeah, it's not alcohol. That's not I mean, he was either. clearly drunk during Night Walk, yeah. which <laughs> Mario, you got to check out Night Walk, the Mickey Rourke, Eric Roberts, yeah, Sean Stone film. Yeah, I to talk about that. I'll definitely yeah. watch that movie. Well, but, uh, well I we'll guess that's, for... where, that's probably where Kevin Smith is headed then too, right? I think he's already there. I think he's, yeah. yeah. Can't chill on the grass. By the way, I don't know if you guys, Hans, you want to go to Mickey Rourke's Instagram and just pull up this oh, picture yeah. real quick? I I mean, this is just an amusing post in general, but I have a theory about Mickey Rourke that I don't mind sharing on this program. It will be a controversial theory. So, so when he's uh, sprawled on the floor? Yes, the I egg I wish it was photo. an egg, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he's got a problem, too. I wish I was an egg. You can okay. turn a hard boiled egg into a soft boiled egg and get in three minutes. Ha ha ha. No one's satisfied with three minutes. Okay. Now, Hans, you want to, all right. So this is already funny by itself, but do you want to zoom in on those hands? Oh boy. Now I sent this oh, to Cisco. Oh, it's not going to let me because fucking Instagram. Oh, sucks. damn. Let me, take, all right. let me take a screenshot of it. Hold on. Yeah, please do. It's almost it's like press ons. Yeah, they are pretty manicured nails that are on his delicate boxer hands. Um, well, I know he likes to dress like a woman. 
He like well, feminine. Yeah. You know. Uh, so my theory is this. All right. I think now Mickey Rourke worked with Michael Cimino, famed director oh. of Year of the Dragon, famed director of The Deer Hunter of yeah. Heaven's Gate. Michael Cimino had a very mysterious change of appearance, kind of like Zac Efron this week. Have you guys seen Zac Efron's face? He's a Lego oh. person. Well, now. those nails look a little beat up on the on on the pointer and middle but yeah they are very uh 50 year old woman yeah yeah zach Efron is dane cook now yeah well my theory is i think mickey rourke is uh like soft trans in that i don't think he thinks he's a woman but he wants to know what it feels like to be a woman all right he, he does kind of well, have a, a chimino look to him is Chimino still alive? Yeah. No, he died a couple of years ago. Um, Michael Chimino started looking like a K-pop sensation in his later yeah. years. Yeah. And uh, there's a very good biography that came out a couple of years ago called Chimino that details his relationship with a hairdresser. And uh, she kind of outs him as at least a cross-dresser. Um, I don't, I don't, maybe more, but she noted his appearance changing over time. She would call him by like a girl's name and stuff. And he lied about everything. He was like, oh yeah, you know, I live in my uh, parents' basement and I just run a shop and this and she, he never like told her, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm the director of the deer hunter. I live in Hollywood. Um, I don't know. You think about a guy like Mickey Rourke, who's like the definition of masculinity for an entire decade, 1980s. Um, he's boring. been on both ends of yeah both ends of the spectrum uh and his complaint with hollywood was that it's too soft he, he had to go into boxing because it was too fake too delicate too soft now as a 65 year old man i think he wants to just experience the other end of that i don't think he's actually Ooh, the believing he's a woman whoa so if you see this and then you see this picture of Mickey work you can really see the oh yeah <laughs> yeah there's a similarity to be had there in hair um and also if you notice with mickey rourke too he can't grow facial hair which has not been the case in the past he will have it glued on and uh, there, there we've watched some mickey rourke uh movies for civic tv that were made in the past five or six years and you can see the glue around the mustache Is and the that like a side films. effect of like uh is that like a side effect of like some sort of like steroid or something? I think it's from the plastic surgery. Oh, yeah. Um, getting his face carved up. Uh, yeah, just melted those uh, pores off or something. Yeah, I think so. So I don't know. He's uh, he's experimenting. He's awfully close to that Russian assistant of his. I think his name like is Dimitri. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah, that's bad. Damn, that is really rough. That was like during Iron Man 2, yeah, wasn't yeah. it? Is that the Iron Man? Yeah. This is like right after The Wrestler. Damn. Hans, you should grow a mustache like that and do your hair like that. A triangular like that? Yeah. I can't grow that hair. You might be able to <laughs> on the sides. Do you think uh, Do you think the whale will be as good as The Wrestler? No. I think The Wrestler is Darren Aronofsky's best movie. He, he, I think his best days are behind him now. But I think it'll be good. I think it'll probably be a return to form for Darren Aronofsky. I didn't like Mother, so. Yeah, The Wrestler is fucking insane. And that is a movie that could probably make me cry without booze. <laughs> it's that's great. How, that's how good that is. Uh, I, I really enjoy Aronofsky's uh, early career aesthetic in uh, Pie and uh, Requiem for a Dream, but I think The Wrestler is definitely his crowning achievement as a director. No question about it. Um, but I'm looking forward to The Whale, although all we've seen from it is that one photo of Brendan Fraser. Everyone won't shut up about The Whale. It's just one photo out there, though. Was he just eating, or was he boozing, or like, was, was did he just fucking chill and eat for a long time? Brendan Fraser? I think, I think it's just fat, fat. I think he was just chowing down. There wasn't any, like, pills with the cheeseburgers or anything? Anything's possible, but, I mean, he didn't really ever fall off. He, he did... Um, didn't he do like an action adventure film and he looked normal in it? Uh, like uh, then The Rock took over, took his role in the movie for the sequel. I think it was Journey to the Center of the Earth, and that was like Black in two thousand 
no yeah it was not like that no it was not like that uh this was like 2008 or 2009 and then you see him pop up a couple of years later and he's fat i remember he his first return was um in the uh the dc show right when like dc did, like yeah yeah when they when dc did their uh s- service that became just part of hbo max mm-hmm yeah, he plays the robot on that. I don't know if he was actually required to do it. I haven't watched an episode of it. I just know he plays a robot character on that show. Right. Um, but then I saw him pop up in that Soderbergh film that went right to HBO Max. And he was so soft. He looked like the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man from Ghostbusters in that movie. With his oh, the like, gangster, and... the like gangster type one? Mm-hmm. With, uh, fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think I liked that movie. No, that movie was not particularly good apparently he had a couple of surgeries that didn't work uh laminectomy which is a a way to take pressure off of the spinal cord or nerves Mm -hmm. and then lumbar surgery that didn't work so he had to do it again went through a divorce lost his mother and was sexually harassed by another guy who was the head of the hollywood foreign press or maybe he just liked eating maybe he just couldn't stop eating maybe it was that maybe you don't need a sob story for getting fat maybe shit happens and you just like sitting around and eating a lot maybe maybe nobody grabbed (laughs) nobody grabbed his ass or wiener uh yeah it was just me and likes cakes yeah he's got a full (laughs) cake ready to go maybe he just keeps a little cake on the side Damn, yeah, you know, I'm. Are, are you dis Mario? Are you disappointed at all that we're not getting that Batgirl movie? Oh, oh no, um, not really. I mean, I, I mean, I like fucking Batman shit, so I guess like it would have been like more shit for me to consume. But um, I don't know, not not really. I I didn't have like extremely uh, high hopes for that. I mean, I I, I imagined it being just like. Uh, a little bit of like a refined CW yeah. type thing, like slightly more refined. But um, yeah, I'm not like losing sleep over that. That's what the, the word was, was that it was essentially more or less what you just said. Uh, I was just looking forward to having Michael Keaton back for a couple of movies. And Brendan Fraser was going to be the villain in that. He was playing Firefly. It could have been real fun to see the uh, the fantasy of him scooting um, around on a jetpack at his size. Yeah. That you could have been, like, would have been great. Mean, uh, a couple jetpacks. Yeah. But. Do you think that what this new HBO guy, what is, is it Warner? Zasloff. Yeah. Discovery plus Warner. Yeah. What he's doing, I think it's, even though I, uh, all the uh, fandom hates it, I think it's, it's very good for business because <laughs> he's just killing things that didn't really seem like a good idea to begin with. And then after you see the people that are attached to them, you're kind of like, this was just going to end like the past couple of years where I feel like uh, superhero movies are definitely in decline. And it's mm. because of the type of stories they're telling and the people they're hiring for it. It's not really the best. Is they're just trying to stretch it as much as possible with who cares characters and who cares stories. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's probably for for the best that he's just like you know what this is fuck it 90 million who cares this is going to be terrible it's going to be bad for us and whatever we want to do more uh the flash though i think it's i think it's interesting that that one's still going uh, well that's because ezra is innocent didn't you see all the charges have been dropped he's an innocent man everybody was just oh, confused it was a big right. misunderstanding that's all yeah. it wasn't a man, I... he just has fans <laughs> Man, oh man! I should have said I was bisexual long, long ago. <laughs> I could go back to second grade. I would write down, "I'm bisexual" on my homework. You don't even have to prove it. You just say, "I'll wear just a say, skirt actually, once in a while." Yeah. Did you say he? Uh, that should be a they. That's all you have. To, I mean, that's all he really did. I yeah. think he, his. He. I don't know if he's even like, bye bye. I thought I could have sworn he was married to a woman for a period of time. Maybe I'm wrong about that. But I think he just like fucks couples. He gets involved with couples and fucks them and then grooms like children or so. I don't know. There's the thing with the 12 year old girl that apparently, I don't, I don't know, things have cleared up with that too in a Massachusetts court. I have no idea. There's so much shit with Ezra Miller where it's just. Yeah. And then I like, I, I like that didn't even seem like sexual though. It seemed like a weird like cult thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like he, 
he promised her like a way into like Native American heaven or something. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see he wanted Susan Sarandon to uh, make an apology to him at his altar and that he, he believes like he's the next Jesus or something? I, I don't know. I saw something with her involved in it. I yeah. know the headline you're talking about, but I, I didn't know. Uh... This shit's gotten so crazy with that man. Like, I, when I, I can't even click on anything, I'm like, yeah, it's not. You're, you're right, though. It doesn't, like, all right, so a lot of these headlines kind of misconstrue what the facts are a little bit because it doesn't seem like there's anything overtly sexual happening with any of the participants. It's all, like, him, like, deeply manipulating these people and trying to, like, harvest something from that. I don't know. It's it's very strange and... and uh peculiar yeah like just... bring their home with a handgun on his waist like really weird like alaskan cowboy weird shit like i don't know is he like part uh something is he from like a tribe no <laughs> he's like what? israeli or something maybe i don't know I don't, miller that... miller I don't... a very um alaskan <laughs> yeah. uh so he was just playing himself and we need to talk about kevin is that I guess so. Yeah, that's, that's the takeaway. Here. Dude, uh, man, that's the only fucking time that I thought that he was a great actor. Or I don't even know. I liked that movie. When I saw it, I was like, yeah, this is cool. Uh, school shooter with a twist, with the bow and arrow. He's, uh, he's from Jersey. Uh, his Just like Kevin is Smith Jewish. of Clerks 3. And his, oh. his mom is Dutch and German, so not no nothing native about this guy. But at he all. wasn't even a, he was not even a practicing Jew. He just has the Jewish dad. Yeah, because it has to be your mom, right, for you to be Jewish. For them to consider. I'm sure, it yeah, still yeah. scores you points. Oh yeah, Hollywood, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't think he was light menorahs. I don't, well, you, you know, he's got very prominent cheekbones. So and that's all you need. That's that you got Elizabeth Warren pretty far couple of years back she skated on that so maybe he's thinking the same i don't know i'm looking forward to the flash uh even though i've like spoiled myself on all the details from the t uh, test screenings that have been held although they're changing that movie left and right like i feel like they're reshooting it every couple of months um to just correspond with whatever the new wb plan is i guess michael keaton's just gonna be weeded out i'm not even like sure if he's gonna be in the final cut of that movie even though He's been in the trailer. Like, they wiped him from Aquaman. They wiped him from... I mean, all Batgirl got wiped. But his whole prospective career doing DC films as Batman is done. Well, his voice was in the trailer, right? Yeah. Done. That was the big marketing point. Yeah. So he'll he'll probably, he'll probably be in it. But I think that's the end of the road for him. Man, I don't know yeah. what the fuck the Flash is going to be like. He's just running around Alaska going yeah. into fucking <laughs> Different tiki, different tiki hats with fucking guns. Just <laughs> running away from T TMZ. Imagine if he does something really bad between like, now and next summer. Like, what if he kills somebody? What right? Are they like, there's do? a no. Here's what happens: there's a double murder suicide in Alaska or Hawaii, and then they bring in the CW Flash that everybody's <laughs> been fucking asking for. If that happened. Uh, do you think that Warner Brothers, with their infinite power and their ability to, like, get them off the hook on a, a lot of these problems, would then spin the murder-suicide as something noble so he can be the Chad Bozeman of of the DC <laughs> universe? <laughs> They'll do a Black Panther sort of thing. Well, they would just have him run around the earth backwards as fast as he can. Yeah. Stop it. Chad, Chad like Bozeman back? Yeah. Um, it reminds You're me of running like, until both. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of uh, when Chris Benoit killed his family and killed himself, and the WWE still held like a memorial for him. They didn't know, yeah, because the they didn't like day. the details yeah. didn't come out yet. So they were like, "Oh, I can't believe he's gone. He was the hero of the WWE." Yeah. Oh, Everyone's teary eyed in a line, ringing yeah. bells or whatever. And then the day after, after things were known, he's like, "Oh, he's never never existed. He got a raising from the to, archive." Uh, I wanted to watch that uh, two part Dark Side of the Ring episode, mm -hmm. but like every time I go to watch it, I'm like, ah. Like that, that might just be too dark right <laughs> too now. Too dark for the dark yeah, side like of the, the ring. The day hasn't come where I'm like, uh, like ready for some true darkness like that. That show, that that's like the one highlight of Viceland. I don't even know if that network's still on. Um, 
Dark Side of the Ring, and then I, they did like a spinoff, Dark Side of the '90s, uh, which was all about like the Jerry Springer show and shit like that. Mm-hmm. That's the one quality. Like one by Chris Farley or something. Mm, yeah. Yeah, you know I haven't they seen need to it, bring but... back. I love the '90s and remember those shows. Why? Those good. Hal Sparks needs work. Michael Ian <laughs> Black needs work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. To bring him back into the you know pop culture, you just get I love the 2000s and. Uh, it's just the same people they already did that yeah there's a lot of comedians that would benefit from uh those paychecks right now for sure yeah brian o'halloran and jeff anderson need something to do now right each one still yes uh vh one's still around they're all still around i don't know who's watching it but yeah I don't know what they're playing, like Real Housewives of Atlanta or something, RuPaul Love and Hip Hop. Dude, I was just watching a VHS of uh, MTV's Aeon Flux or Eon Flux or whatever. And I was like, I, I couldn't believe that like this was like an MTV like funded, like something that they like bought and paid for. And then like, I was just thinking about like how, like it was like an amazingly done like animated show. And uh, just like, and then I just like fast forwarded to like 16 and pregnant reunion show. And it's just like, damn, like we are really like, just like sliding like quick with entertainment, like really quick. And I was yeah. just like. See, I did the opposite thing though. I watched 16 and pregnant recently. And I was like, damn, this is great. How did we <laughs> fall so hard from here? <laughs> I've never fucking seen that. Um, but, I, mean, I mean, I can get the gist of it, but. What are the what were the cartoons that they had that were like that? It was uh, it was Liquid Television, right? I think was the the program that that spawned from, and then that got its own full series. But there was they did a thing where it was like little vignettes of different cartoons. Um, and I think it was under the banner of Liquid Television. Yeah, and Eon Flux was the surprising. highlight, like the just like the artistic fucking, just like quality, like the the care that like they would like fully back like this corporation was just like fully backing and i was like wow that's uh really crazy that that even happened that is definitely something that i think has been lost with the um animation being done uh specifically on computers now a lot of it still gets outsourced to korea and they might have even done that back then um but it's so easy to animate now and you can see all of these conveniences in um, so much of animation these days, whether it's 2D or 3D or whatever it is, it all feels very like cheap and almost like flash animation, even if it's got like a nice budget behind it. Yeah, I guess it's just, you know, money, money at the end mm-hmm. of the day. Money and time is just not worth the, uh, it's not worth it for uh, people that make money. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, it's starting to get late over here. Uh, do I we guess- want to uh, put a cap? on the on the program are there any final thoughts on uh kevin smith or on clerks on ezra miller on liquid television hans uh that was a that was a nice era to be a young 20 something year old uh when those things were yeah i was like thinking. five back then oh, i think mario was even younger than me oh, i think oh. <laughs> you know you know, growing up with Beavis and Butthead as a 20 year old. Uh, no, no. But I think I think we're lucky that, you know, we were able to experience. Uh, when when channels were still taking risks with things like that, because even Comedy Central doesn't take risks anymore. Uh, it's not not much comedy anymore or Cartoon Network also doesn't take as many risks anymore. So how about this for a risk? A fame program from when you were a kid is getting revived. Night Court is coming back to Peacock. Night Court. What the hell is that? You, you know, saw nobody that. knows. Hans, you love Night Court, don't you? Never saw that. No. Well, that's uh, I mean, the main guy from that is dead. I don't know why they're bringing it back. But Night well, Court is coming to Peacock this spring. But we're I mean, lucky. we're lucky to have, I guess that's the, we're lucky to have these uh, old men that make these shit that we still <laughs> like to try to revive something that people might recognize. Here's a question actually real quick. Did either of you guys ever see the Clerks sitcom? No. Uh, it starred Jim Brewer and some other guy. And it was like one episode played on Fox, I think it was in 95 or 96. And it's nothing at all like Clerks. What the hell? It, I think so it like might be Bond? 
it, yeah, it's all it's all the same. It had one episode that aired, but they shot a few, and um, it was right after the movie made it big. I don't think Kevin Smith was involved at all. They had two different clerks. I don't even know if it was called Quick Stop. It's I think the full episode is on YouTube somewhere. Saved by the Clerks. There's a. I don't think so. I think it's, it's a... just Clerks. Two pilot. The pilot is on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh... Well, you want to just pull up an image uh... of it real quick? If Kevin doesn't have another heart attack, I'm going to keep fucking driving 30 miles to see his movies and uh, Rob Zombie too. And uh, yeah, I guess we're just, uh, we're just fortunate to have uh, grown up with like people that we could like watch over time. And like, mm -hmm. I guess people don't have that anymore. Yeah. Uh, I, I think eventually some, some will, will rise. Somebody will come, around, come along. Yeah. But uh, that, that era of like, you're getting, 15 notable directors maybe in a decade i think that time might be at least on pause for a bit there you go there's the clerks that everybody even loves this, even the set looks nothing like like that convenience store it just was like convenience store set uh yeah what the hell so yeah, yeah that maybe that'll be a future episode of movies probably all right uh mario right. do you have you have any gigs or anything you want to promote uh, no, I got to book some shit. I got to book some shit. I got to put some stuff on Spotify. I got a couple things to do when I get back to Chicago. But um, yeah, no, I'm good. Excellent. Well, how, how did the how did the recent gig you did? I think it was what Saturday? How yeah, did that, that go? Was, that was sick. I just uh, basically just got together everybody that I like grew up with that plays music like, do you want to do something where we fucking grew up? And uh, we did. And we uh, set up the stage and everything, set up the fucking stage ourselves, which was not t super fun, but uh, it worked. It uh, it ended up being totally fine and uh, nothing bad happened. Like it was a good show and everybody had a blast and maybe I'll do something again like that. Maybe downtown next time because uh, not everybody wants to come out to the suburbs, but uh, we had a lot of friends and family come through and uh I think now I got to set something up downtown. Oh, that's awesome. That, that's terrific. And you got a music video you're putting together at the moment. Yeah. As soon as I uh, edit the rest of that. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll have to do uh, another call. Maybe uh, not live on the show. We'll, we'll go over some stuff with that. If uh, Yeah. I'll need yeah. some pointers. That's no problem at all. Past, uh, 30 seconds. <laughs> Dude, I got to tell you something once we're speaking of like, run times geez after we're done with the show uh anyway all right this has been movies for this week uh i'll recommend clerks three hans hated clerks three mario where do you fall on that i'll give it a three even stars all right i guess i'm the most generous member of the panel tonight <laughs> all right that has been movies for this week thank you for listening